Good morning everybody and welcome to the first Sunday in June, 7th of June, as we look at Trinity Sunday. Well, it's good to be with you once more. Good to know that people are looking in and joining together in worship uh, within our North Shields and Whitley Bay Circuit and across the world. We follow Pentecost, which was a superb act of worship led by Ever. We now come to Trinity Sunday. So let us begin in prayer. Gracious God, creator of all, there in the beginning, with us in Christ, with us through the power of the Holy Spirit, all worship belongs to you, our triune God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us then worship together with the singing of our first hymn, Father, we love you, we worship and adore you. Let us pray. God beyond all our naming, the glory of creation reaches out to you. God beyond all our reasoning, the voice of the universe sounds your praise. God beyond all our knowing, all that lives finds its destiny in your presence. And now a prayer that was put together by Norman Woolwalk. We praise you, O God, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit. In wisdom you have brought forth the vibrancy of creation. In mercy you have called your people into the pilgrimage of faith. In weakness you have revealed the power of the gospel and in your providence you have raised up your servant church. And so with all who long to fulfil your will, we pray that we may see your glory, hear your voice, obey your call, and carry on our bodies the wounds of those faithful to your sending. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
We come now to one of his set readings for today. It is uh, Psalm 8, that talks of God our Creator. If you feel you are able to, please join in the bolder type style. O Lord, our Sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and infants, you have founded a bulwark because of your foes, to silence the enemy and the avenger. When I look to your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? Yet you have made them a little lower than God and crown them with glory and honour. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Sovereign, how majestic is all your name in all the earth. Amen. A reading then from the Gospel for today, the very end of Matthew's Gospel, the commissioning of the disciples. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Amen. Let us join in the singing of our next hymn, O Watcher in the Wilderness, O Lord of Bush and Flame. name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. 
Well, as you've probably already guessed, this Sunday is Holy Trinity Sunday. The disciples have welcomed the gift of the Holy Spirit. And they're being commissioned and sent out to tell the wonders of the good news of Jesus Christ. And yet the Holy Trinity is not something that is easily explained. There's no doctrine of it as such in the, new, in the scriptures. It is simply there in essence and then developed by the church later on. So how would you explain the Holy Trinity to a, a young teenager? This uh, three in one or one in three business. Perhaps pictures or illustrations may help. For example, to the teenager, his mother is mum. She is Joan to dad and she is Mrs Smith to lots of other people. One gets a handle on three in one and one in three with illustrations and we'll save one special one for a little later in the service. It is right at that stage but the doctrine of the Holy Trinity does go much deeper Although the doctrine of the Trinity is not explicitly mentioned in Scripture, it is implicit in several texts. We shall not completely understand the mystery of the Trinity as we do not understand the mystery of God. But because it is central to our Christian faith, perhaps we ought to spend just a little bit of time today thinking clearly about it and try and understand something of its mystery. In our creeds, we say something about our belief in God, the maker of heaven and earth. There being one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, and the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life. So let's first then look at God as creator. God expresses himself through creation. He is always active. Never once stops being creative. Indeed, our scriptures open, in the beginning, God created. In the beginning, the word was with God and the spirit hovered over the waters. Whatever else comes up in those first two chapters of Genesis and the order of the events that are taken over a, a period of time, there is no doubt that God is there and has always been there and goes on being there. Think for a moment about a watch, a beautiful watch. Think of the finished article telling the time, and yet behind all its intricate workings, there is a creator. You know, when I was uh, on holiday um, as a, a child, I never really appreciated what my parents went on and on about when we were having a run out into the country. We would stop, have a picnic, and they would marvel at the scenery laid before them, the mountains, the great lakes, and so on. And yet in time, as one matured, and one's eyes of faith were opened, one began to appreciate those views of majestic mountains and the great lakes, something that couldn't possibly be made by man but something behind man, something that is unknown in the mystery of it all, but we label God, God the creator. It is easy to see when things go wrong in our world, when war escalates and nations fight against nations. 
how we damage the world through pollution. How we haven't learned to share with one another and respect one another as we ought because of man's greed and selfish ways. How hunger is prevalent within our world and yet to others is unknown. For the Christian, this distancing from God is our sin. But God is a creator, God that loves us. And so, as we move to the second stage, in the Creed it says, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God. It is God the Redeemer. For God expresses his love for the world through the redemptive work of Jesus Christ. Here then is God in human flesh. As it said in the beginning of our scriptures, the word made flesh. That is as much of God as you will ever see in one person. Healing, loving, forgiving, teaching. Who said, I am and the Father are one. He who has seen me has seen the Father. Jesus, God incarnate, love on earth. God is not only sovereign, but saviour. Not only creator, but redeemer. Not only above us, but also amongst us. God has visited his world to reconcile humankind to himself and to one another. He has done this through Jesus Christ. For Jesus is the way to God. I am the way, the truth and the life, he said. There is a lovely story that came out of um, the Second World War of a royal signaller that had to get a message through at all costs. Unfortunately, he was shot dead. And one thought for a moment uh, that the message hadn't got through, that it had been defeated, if you like. And yet, in outstretched hands, he held together two wires. The connection had been made, meaning thousands of lives were saved because of that communication as troops were redeployed. The poignancy of it all is Christ has done that for humankind. Hanging on the cross, bridging the earthly and the heavenly, outstretched on that cross, reconciling us back to the Creator and Father. So how can this affect us today, 2,000 years on? Well, as we come to the third point in a moment or two, let's just pause for a moment and look at this vivid illustration of the Trinity. So let's think about the Trinity, God as Father, Son and Holy Spirit. And there can be no better place to find out about God than the Bible. Through the ages, God has always been there. And we hear in this book of many examples of his power. Do you remember how God caught Moses' attention with that burning bush in the form of a flame? Wow! That would definitely capture my attention. What about you? But as time went on, the people became distanced from God. And so he needed to do something different. So he sent his son into the world. His light to be in the form of a human being. And so his son, Jesus, came into the world to live among us, to teach us God's ways. And we hear all about that in the New Testament. But those in authority didn't like what Jesus was doing on earth. They didn't like what he was saying. And so they tried to put out his flame by killing him. 
getting rid of him. And as we know, on Good Friday, he was crucified and they put out that flame. But we also know that three days later, Jesus rose from the dead. He came back from the dead and his flame was again, once again, lit on that Easter Sunday morning. That flame will never go out, for that's Jesus. Last week, it was Pentecost, wasn't it? And we heard about the Holy Spirit coming to those disciples in that room as tongues of fire. That Holy Spirit is still alive today. It's with us. It's in us. The Holy Spirit lives in you and me. We are God's people. We are his hands, his feet, his lips, and we do his work this day. For the Holy Spirit is part of that Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so to our third point, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life. God creator, God redeemer, and now God the sanctifier. Last week we looked at Pentecost as ever led our worship. Now Jesus promises his followers this helper, a comforter, an advocate, the spirit of truth to take his place. In effect, saying, you'll be better off when I have left you, because I will be able to be with you for all times. Lo, I will be with you till the end of the age. You will remember from our scriptures that Lazarus died with his weeping sisters beside him. But Jesus was not present. He was some distance away. Now God in Jesus is unlimited, no longer bound to one place at one time, and now through the Holy Spirit able to be with us in all places and in all experiences of life. The early disciples after the resurrection had come to realise that in their quest after holiness, as they sought to grow in the Christian way, it was not enough. To have God near to them, just standing alongside. Christ, you remember, could be only a couple of paces away, and yet they could still quarrel with one another about who would be the greatest in his kingdom. They needed help. They needed something nearer than near. And if they were to have victory over sinfulness inside them, they must have God within them remaking their nature, that transformative power that enabled them to conquer things through the power of the divine love and defeating evil. And that is the greatest secret of the gift at Pentecost. The Almighty God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob and Moses, the very same God shown in human form in Jesus, through the presence of his Holy Spirit, now lives within his followers to make them holy. Here is God the Sanctifier. And so, this self-same living power of God, the very presence and love of Jesus can be ours, to live within, to conquer sin, and make us more and more into his image of love bringing forth the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, humility and self-control. And so, in a very quick and simplistic way, we have the doctrine of the Holy Trinity. The one in three, the three in one. God, creator, redeemer, sanctifier. God reigning over all of us. God living among us 
and God within us. God in the origins, God in the history, and God in the present day and future experience. This is Trinity Sunday. Let us adore the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the great triune God. Amen. So now a time of prayer, and as has become our custom, if you would like to type any initials or situations in the comments box, please feel free to do so. God hears our prayers spoken and unspoken and typed and untyped. So let's pray. Lord God, we have considered again today that subject of the Trinity as we try to get our heads round the enormity of a God Father, Son and Holy Spirit, three in one and one in three. And we know we will only ever grasp a small part of who you are. And yet we come before you to worship you and to follow your Son, Jesus Christ, led by your Holy Spirit in the way we live our lives. There is so much for us to struggle with right now, Lord. And we know that the last few weeks has brought a mix of feelings for your people in this world. While some enjoy the space and time away from the norm, in the garden, reading books, rediscovering old hobbies and perhaps trying out new ones, walking and finding new places and engaging with nature, catching up with jobs that have needed doing for a long time. There are others for whom these have been and continue to be dark days. We know, Lord, that so many have lost loved ones and there is pain and sadness, a loss of hope, and a sense that life can never be the same again. We know that there is loneliness for those who are scared to go out, whatever the rules may say, in case they become terribly ill or bring illness back to a loved one. We know there are those for whom isolation has been, been very real in the last weeks and months with little contact from others. In a moment of quiet, we bring before you those who are suffering in this pandemic. Lord, we want to give thanks for all those who go the extra mile to help others caring and bringing us what we need. We rejoice in those who have simply sought to bring a smile to our face and have looked out for us or for those who we love. We pray for those in authority, those tasked with deciding what rules should be. Give them wisdom and guidance, Lord, that the decisions they make may be what is needed at this time. We pray for unity and that where there is difference, that there may be a desire to come together to work out what is for the best. It's so easy, Lord, to forget to be kind. And so we bring before you those who face with responsibility. And life goes on, Lord. There are people and situations completely unrelated to the virus people who have real need, people who suffer in very different ways. And so in our final time of quiet, 
we bring before you now other situations that are on our hearts. God, you are Father, Son and Holy Spirit. You are perfect in community. And so we bring these and all our prayers together as we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Sue, for leading our prayers of intercession. We now sing our third hymn, The Church of Christ in Every Age. Please join in as you are able. Do stay on after the service finishes to listen to some music and post any remarks that you would like to make. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you for all time to fulfil the purposes of God. Amen.